Thank you very much, everybody, for that. Um, just to let you know, by the way, I have got a very weak connection on your continuing sobriety. Thank you so much indeed. Right. Oh, thank you, everybody. Sitting here, drinking my lime cordial in sparkling water. 95 days for me today. That's Angela. Well done, Angela. Days like today, it's really, really hot. It's currently 19 degrees, but there's no wind, so it feels a great day. There we go. The Wi-Fi here is really bad, so I've got it in the best position. At the moment, it's a good connection. What's it like there now? It's not still frozen, is it? Because I can see everything coming through. Yeah, but those of you who like to celebrate your sobriety, today, It keeps freezing. Mm. Right, let me see if I can do something about that. Today, it keeps freezing. Mm. Right, let me see if I can do something about that. Let's see if that's any better. Funny the things you have to do to try and get a good signal. The only thing is I can't read. I, can't, I now can't read. Oh, God's truth. What am I doing? Thank you for the roses. For 27 years. Thank you very much for guidance. And every time failing. So I'm an expert failure when it comes to quitting alcohol. So I suppose. And every time failing. So I'm an expert failure when it comes to quitting alcohol. So I suppose I'm the best person to tell you about failing. The man with a proverbial hat. Really? What's proverbial about my hat? <laughs> right, so my personal journey then was really about making and in order to to do that i had to allow myself to keep drinking so i kept drinking but it was on a much four to six weeks of doing that i also cut out the wine especially the stronger end wine so that was my plan especially the stronger end wine so that was my plan to wean myself off. It's a bit like if you like um, smoking and you want to give up your cigarettes, only with alcohol, it's a little bit different, but we'll use that as an example. So smokers, when they go down to a lower tar or change to menthol or change to whatever they want, they're not really doing themselves that much good and what they do is eventually come on to this saviour, they say. People have been saved by vaping. And um, they found that they could saviour, they say. People have been saved by vaping. And um, they found that they can still do the habit of smoking and still get the nicotine, which gives them the mental buzz without having to quit completely doing the habitual things. Because even with smoking, you've got triggers 
an alcoholic has got so many triggers. I'm still discovering triggers all the time. And it was only last week that my old friend depression crept back in after being absent from my life for so long. And it was just alcohol trying everything it possibly could. Just alcohol trying everything it possibly could to get me to open a bottle. Now I didn't want to open a bottle so I had to deal with my anxiety and my depression. The last thing I expected was it to revisit me but I, luckily I got some medications which I hadn't had for a while. So after two or three days I found I was begin, beginning to regain control of this old friend of the black dog. Um, although I spent most of my time here by the sea where I am at the moment breathing in the fresh sea air air, and sleeping a lot because I didn't want to give in to pick up most of my time here by the sea where I am at the moment breathing in the fresh sea a bottle of alcohol and start drinking again. I've, I've come this far now of 58 days today. This was on day 52 or 3 I think it was and I didn't want to waste all those days. It's the most I'd ever done before. And of course, being accountable now, not only to me, but to you, who are my support system, I felt that I had to take charge of the depression and the alcohol. And working with those two together, depression and alcohol, was really a, a hefty chore and a big demand on my willpower. But I got through that, and the depression seems to have gone now, although I'm on meds now for that, so it doesn't seem to be affecting me anyway. But the whole point of this conversation is about planning and expecting certain triggers and certain unexpected things to come up along the way. I mean, even with the best intentions in the world, alcohol planning and your your journey towards sobriety, something will come along which will be equivalent to that puncture and throw you off the road or halt you in your tracks until you can put yourself back on course again. And that's exactly what happened to me um, with the depression, which just came out of nowhere after years of being absent. So I had to deal with that, which is a just a small bump in the road. And the problem, I think, with not having a plan to quit drinking is that if you get a bump in the road, you're not quite sure how to deal with it or what you should do. And you can maybe allow that to throw your journey completely into kilter and everything goes wrong. Um, for example, and you're running on ordinary tyres, you've got to call for help. And if that call for help doesn't come in in time, that you can continue your journey and get to that wedding, it's going to start without you. And that's exactly the same with a roadmap towards sobriety. So if you're an alcoholic, as I am, and if you're new to my channel, an alcoholic will always be an alcoholic, even if they don't drink anymore. That's the very nature of who they are. And the sooner you can admit you're an alcoholic, the better, because the sooner you can make the plan, the plan for your journey towards sobriety, alcohol recovery. So let's just now say you've, uh, you're sitting there and you've now decided you want to quit drinking. You don't really, in my opinion, want to start And I found the planning didn't always work, so I hadn't given it long enough. That's why I failed so many times in 30 years. But every time I failed, and bearing in mind I'm now 64, I've had lots of experience at failing. And with that experience, you take away a lesson. So I'm not saying that I'm now carrying 15 spare tires in my car, just in case I get loads of punches on the way but I've now made adequate plans to begin another attempt at sobriety and after six months of having um, and after six months of having um, no strong alcohols spirits gin whiskey Bacardi vodka that sort of thing um, and I'd also quit the stronger wines and, have, and shortly after I started on that journey all my wine drinking I was only now drinking beer and it wasn't strong beers like um, extra strength 
lager or something like this. It was just ordinary beers. Once I'd gone six months or so of doing that, I still didn't feel quite right that I was ready to start my sobriety journey. However, in hindsight, it may have been a better time to do that six months ago because we're looking at approaching, you know, the winter period where it's not quite so hot like it is today. And the heat is usually the flat tire or the puncture in the sobriety journey of an alcoholic because you get you get triggers and one of my triggers and one of the common triggers for an alcoholic is hot weather. You automatically think beer or something else. Hello from Thailand. Hello and from the Philippines. Oh, thank you very much. Um, accident. It was planned. Um, it was, sorry, my signal is definitely varying. Um, so it was planned for a very long time. And even so, there were still things that came up and threw me. And I said the last one was my old friend, the black dog, depression, which I had to deal with. And it was like getting four flat tyres all at once. And even if you carried a spare tyre in your boot, there's nothing you can do when you get more than one flat tyre, when you've been carrying one spare. So that's what it was like to me. So <coughs> then um, the more likely you are to succeed at it. It's, is it gin o'clock yet? Is it wine o'clock yet? You know, there are certain things you say which are triggers as well. So I had to change my vocabulary. Um, just this last few days, you will notice, those of you who saw my TikTok, and this is a very serious thing to do as well because it's a lot of money involved. Uh, it's not wasteful, I don't think, because it was quite old. But one of my triggers was my bloody sofa at home, not here. And every time I sat on that sofa watching a, 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 a t watching the TV, I felt that just here at my side on a little table should be a beer. So what did I do? I broke up the sofa and chucked it out. And I bought that new sofa about the time that I started my journey, but it arrived just this last week. Heather from New Orleans. Hi, Heather. It's really good to see you here. Hi, everybody. I can't read all the names because they're very pale grey and I'm facing into the sunlight and I can't really see very well. But you can see me better and the signal's better as well. I'm doing really well. Thank you very much. I'm now on day 58 of my journey. And I'm sorry for this funny angle I've got. But um, at least you can see my little environment. And this stand that my iPad is on. It's balanced on the ledge of an open window so we can get a better signal through the window. <laughs> Things we have to do. So, planning of your journey is more important, in my opinion, than the journey itself. Um, the destination is also important. So the planning and the destination, it's knowing when you've got there. Now, you know when you're driving, which is the metaphor I keep using, you know when you're driving because the sat-nav will tell you you've arrived at destination. Or if you know the journey well, you know when you've arrived. But if you don't know when you've arrived at your destination, then all sorts of chaos can ensue because you may keep driving. You won't know where to go when you get to... You know. So six months down the line and I've still not had a drink, I'll know that I'm still on the journey and I'm on the correct path. If anything goes wrong and a wheel should fall off whilst I'm on that journey of six months, then all I can do is get back in that car and start again and reassess what happened to make me fall off that journey or get lost on the way. Hopefully that won't happen. So that also means that after a year, I can do another assessment and assuming that I don't fall off the wagon and the wheel falls off my car, then after a year, at the moment, because I've never not drunk uh, a hotel, for example, which is maybe a Premier Inn that doesn't have a bar or any facilities, I have always in the past had to buy alcohol from a local shop to take into the room. Um, 
also hiding alcohol. Alcohol has dom dominated my life for 50 years. Um, so when you haven't got alcohol in your life... Sorry, I can't do that in that app. Can you? Okay, never mind. Um, so part of the journey, part of the planning to quit drinking is what you're going to do when alcohol is no longer dominantly prominent in your life. It is dominant in your thoughts, but now on the other way round. It should be that you've got nobody to share it with. So it's not dominant in your thoughts with sharing and helping and looking for encouragement from third parties. Um, which means, of course, you're alone in your thoughts on this journey. You are more than likely to fail. And I know after 30 years, I speak with experience. I'm, I'm an expert in failure for 30 years of trying to quit drinking and it hasn't, hasn't happened. Now I know a lot, I've seen so many people speak to me since joining TikTok, which has been a huge support and a huge part of my journey, which I'd not really planned for because I'd had no experience of this before. So it didn't really figure in my plan of how I'm gonna progress <coughs> willpower. It was gonna be my age and accumulated wisdom and experiences over the last 30 years of trying to quit with lots of other provisos built in there too around friends and family to help me but TikTok or any social 48,000 49 now I think 49,000 people standing beside me very quickly as well got behind me in just a few days whereas a lot of people take time to grow their their following on TikTok mine happened rather quickly because of the subject matter and the number of if along your your journey things don't go, go according to plan and that's what we're talking about here today a plan to become sober then call me you now give me a quick message if you want to talk to anybody we're all here somebody will talk to you and that has been an thing through are you all getting the topic I'm sorry if it's freezing. I've actually ordered um, some Wi-Fi to come into this unit, but there's a huge backlog. I would love to get it done so I can do this more reliable. I actually quite like this framing, don't you? Looking up at, up at the camera so you can see behind me. I quite like that frame shot. So, um, really, that's just. I'm not gonna keep discussing this for new people that keeps coming in. But I just wanted to give you a little bit more information about planning and give you an example of my planning, planning the journey towards my alcohol recovery. Um, I know my journey won't be suitable for anyone. But as I said, I've had 30 years ex or 50 years experience of drinking, 30 years experience of failing to quit drinking and taking away as much of my experience as possible. Now with the my age in my favour and my accumulated wisdom over that period of, of 30 years of trying to quit, this hopefully is my final attempt. And I feel that I will still be talking to you daily and doing lives after 100 days, after 365 in so much before. In fact, some people say, how much were you drinking before? And that's 200 units of alcohol a week sometimes on a bad week but not very often 300 units a week what made me decide to take this f last attempt at stopping drinking well one was an abnormal liver test blood test which I still haven't had retested yet and my eight-year-old granddaughter so I've got in my plan the reasons why it's important to me to stop drinking now and maybe before in my journeys of trying in that last 30 years, my reasons to stop drinking weren't really good enough reasons to stop drinking. Drinking was always more important than the reasons were. If your reasons to stop drinking are now more important than the alcohol itself, then that's the first step. It doesn't mean you should stop tomorrow. It doesn't mean that this weekend is going to be the last day you're going to drink because you're setting yourself up for a failure 
And I know that you don't want that. I don't want you to have that as the inevitable journey you're going to take. Do it impetuously without any planning and you fall off. What I want to ask you to do is to not stop drinking yet. Look for the right reason if you haven't got one, the one that's more important than the alcohol. Seek help from other people that I'm reducing. I'm not going to crave, I'm not going to get withdrawals, but how can I say no thank you to that drink because I've had my units or whatever your plan is. As I did from day one, I said my plan now is to get rid of the strong alcohol to make it easier to quit with fewer withdrawals and cravings, which does work, but it doesn't remove the withdrawals and cravings. It just makes them easier and more bearable. So if you're on the hard stuff, maybe part of your plan is to have a few weeks or months just drinking some weaker stuff as I did, but your plan is bespoke to you. You know how you're gonna do it, but my advice is just don't suddenly stop drinking. Have a plan, have a backup. When that day arrives and you are ready, you still wouldn't have thought of everything in your journey because I couldn't have anticipated that the old black dog of depression was gonna come back. So dealing with alcohol withdrawal and cravings and the black dog at the same time was a huge challenge for me. I had to come here to the coast to get away from it. I had to change my sofa at home, an association with alcohol, a sofa. But if you're not prepared to get rid of all your associations, you ain't ready to stop drinking. And sometimes your associations with alcohol may involve people. And if you don't change the way you mix with these people, who you associate with alcohol, unless they're going to be part of your support system, of course, then you're setting yourself up again for failure. So today's talk to you really was based on my own experience of failing so many times and why I decided I was going to make proper plans this time. And I'm thankfully I did because now I'm on day 58, my longest ever by a long way. And I found it much easier than I've ever found before. But, but I found that I had to, because every time I sat on it in a certain position or a certain reclining position, I associated it with a drink. So I've got rid of it. This seems silly, doesn't it? How much did you drink? I've recently answered that and you'll find the answer in my um, link tree. My common questions I get asked. You can't miss it. My mum, unfortunately, died of alcohol. Yeah, sadly, there are some people who um, would my um, link tree. My common questions I get asked. You can't miss it. My mum, unfortunately, died of alcoholism. I'm sorry, I prefer to keep drinking. But that is really, really sad. Um, hi, I can't hear you. I'm deaf AMSC, hard of hearing. I'm sorry about that. Nothing I can really do about it. If I talk much louder, then everybody can hear what I'm talking about because I'm talking at an empty... Look, let me show you. The window's open. That's where I'm resting. The iPad. But look at the view. You know, that's my view. That's around me. And that's where I like. Oh, give me a foot straight. This is where I like to, um, let me see if I can balance it there. This is my bolt hole when I feel I need a rehab. Not just for rehab, I come here for holidays too. So let's have a look. Looking good, mate, backing you all the way. I drink a bit too much myself. Does the life keep freezing? Yes, it does. Now you are dominating alcohol. Um, hello, how are you? I'm good, 58 days, thank you very much. Yeah, I am, I am now in charge of the alcohol, not the alcohol in charge of me anymore, but it could easily, my, my journey is well planned, but I could easily get a puncture. The wheel could fall off. I might break down. Anything could happen. 
it might be a tragedy happens to someone I know or a situation. Anything to throw me off. Seems to me the signal keeps varying still. There's nothing I can do about it whilst I'm here. But I have ordered a Wi-Fi to be fitted in here. Thirty-four days sober here, and I want to keep it that way. Well done. Yes, the more down that road you get, the more excited you become about your future. And some people do fall off the wagon. I don't want to put any negatives into your mind, but don't get complacent. Somebody told me just this morning <coughs> that they'd done ninety days and fallen off the wagon. And the temperature is now 22 degrees. So it's gone up three degrees since the start of the live stream. I could really murder beer. But I'm really happy about that. Thank you so much for your support. Where do you live? I'm in West Yorkshire. That's in the UK because I can't see where you are. Right, that connection is definitely going in and out. It's freezing. Terrible. What I'm going to do is to download this live and I'm going to put it onto my link tree. So you can hear my link stream. Yes, I'm still sober, thank you very much. Um, if you've come in late, then I will be downloading this and putting it in my link tree. That's the link you will find in my profile, on my TikTok profile. 58 days sober. You remember when your mum was in hospital, they said if alcohol was a drug, it would be a class A. Yes, I probably would. Keep it up, you're doing amazing. Popcorn just joined, HMC just joined. So if you're here because of the subject matter, the topic, which is planning your journey to become alcohol free, and I'm an alcoholic, and